The Nigerian digital lending industry is currently in a dire state, with both lenders and borrowers expressing concerns. The lenders, commonly known as loan app companies, are worried about the high levels of indebtedness among borrowers. Meanwhile, borrowers are lamenting the exorbitant interest rates which are making it difficult for them to repay their loans and pushing them further into debt. Now, some of the loan apps currently offer annual percentage rates APRs ranging from 34% to 271% with repayment periods of 3 to 24 months. While these rates are significantly higher than those charged by traditional banks, digital lenders argue that the risks involved in their lending model are also greater and many of the customers may not be able to secure loans from banks. Furthermore, digital lenders reveal that a significant portion of the funds used to operate their lending businesses are borrowed from banks, with banks' interest rates already factored in. Now, this suggests that the high costs are being passed on to the end consumers, contributing to the affordability challenges faced by the borrowers. In today's episode, we'll explore how sorry and interest rates and rising non-performance loan or performing loans rather threaten the viability of loan art businesses in Nigeria. Welcome on board. I am Justin Nakadoni, your host. Welcome back from that quick break. The chairman of the Money Lenders Association, the umbrella body of registered digital money lenders in Nigeria, Gwemi Adilikon, justified the high interest rates charged by loan apps. He explained that the rate reflects the cost of funds and technology used by these digital lenders. According to Adilikon, digital lenders do not receive deposits like banks, so they have to borrow money from banks to operate their businesses. However, it is important to know that some digital lenders are licensed as microfinance bank by the Central Bank of Nigeria and can therefore accept deposits, similar to commercial banks. I have a state surveyor and public affairs analyst, Mustafa Iwela, joining me now for more discussions on this. Thanks for joining me on Business Insight, Mustafa. Thank you for having me, Justin. All right, it is indeed our pleasure. You know, the, what, the situation is really, really alarming and... Uh, these lenders, they charge as much as 34% uh, to 271%. To That's the accumulative um, uh, percentage they charge for their loans, which went from like 3 to 24 months. You know, in as much as they are trying to justify the fact that it's because of the high interest rates in the country, others don't see any reason why they can borrow as much as 2.5 million and be paying back over 6 million naira after 24 months. How do you react to this? Okay, thank you for having me, Justin. So mm -hmm. it is very critical that uh, we have this type of discussion in, at the front burner of our uh, discussion today. Yes. In a time where Nigerians are going through a lot of hardship. Yes, so um, according to a certain report, as at April 2023, uh, uh, what's it called? The money uh, lending ratio declined from 4.5% to 4.1%. Uh, also, our liquidity ratio as of May 2023 also increased from 44% mm. to 48%. Yes. And this is about the normal 30 30 percent minimum yeah. uh, recommended right. by the prudential requirement so uh, but so it, it suffices to say that uh, there's a lot of activities going on within our money lending sector mm. and uh, uh, everything rises and falls on uh, the fccpc mm. which is a regulatory body that governs that sector of the economy which is the federal federal competition and consumer protection mm. commission uh, this commission is of course, of course, backed by law, uh, I think sometimes in April 2018. Mm. And uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of irregularities in that sector. As we speak, sometimes in May last year, the approved digital lenders by FCCPC, there are only about 284. Mm. And I think about sometimes last year also, about 34 of them were blacklisted for different purposes, for different reasons. So it's I mean it's sad because um, mm. most of all these money lenders again take loan from the banks. And, I mean for whatever it takes, they also want to make profits and they also want they are also in the business to make money. So if our current interest rate with CBN is about twenty six point two five percent, so any money lending company also will want to make profits. So that's why you have customers or borrowers mm. paying huge interest. I've, I had a case of somebody who, who was to borrow 2.5 million. I had to pay about six six million in mm. total, which is about almost four million naira interest. Well, it's 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 because of the situation we find ourselves. Mm. The I mean, for whatever it takes, the CDN 
the FCCPC needs to do a lot to, you know, overall that sector. There is no how, there is no way people won't borrow money. Mm. Currently, as we speak now, our 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 non-performing loans with mm. the SMEs is close to about 1.3, 1.32 trillion. So that the default rate is high, non-performing rate is alarming, and the reason for that is not far fetched. I know it, it is, but then, like you have said, it's just a situation um, in the country. But alternatively, now, what can Nigerians begin to do for those who really have um, genuine reasons uh, yes. for funds and they, they need capital, you know, to you know to boost their business, their small business from point A to point B? What can they be doing when uh, the microfinance bank said that ordinary should be uh, funding them and not really uh, doing or uh, so much to meet their needs? So let me say that it is insane for any businessman. To go into any business without taking a loan it is mm. insane you don't go into a business and invest all your personal funding into the okay. business in case what if it goes wrong then you're going to be bankrupt so it is always very easier to share the risks between a microfinance or a commercial mm. bank it's easier it makes life easy so you make money the bank is also making money mm. but why we have a lot of default rates is because of high interest rates mm. that's why it is very critical that we also differentiate between the approved digital lenders and the loan sharks. Mm -hmm. The loan sharks are the ones that will give you high interest rates under illegal conditions. Yes, <laughs> and that's and really very short term. So a very short term. To pay back. And and don't get it twisted. We have them in Nigeria. We have them in over in you know in other climes too. Mm. But whatever it is, it is only in Nigeria that people see taking loans as a shameful thing. It's not a shameful thing. Mm. It's a normal way of life in advanced countries. Yes, they live on credit. Even, they live on credit. Even so. In order for you to be credit worthy in advanced mm. countries, you must have seen to be taking a loan and you must have paid off that loan successfully. Mm. That's when you become credit worthy in yes. the eye of the government. That's mm. when you have access to a lot of opportunities sure. of, you know, of you know, bonuses from the government. Mm. But so in, here in Nigeria, we see it as. So loan in itself it, is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's, it's, it's a way of life. That's mm. the industry. It's a way of life in advanced countries. And we need to also imbibe that in Nigeria. Mm. But, but one of the biggest issues that those, the ADLs are going through, the approved mm. digital lenders are going through, is that. A lot of people who cannot access loans from commercial banks due mm. to bad credit yes. are the ones that the ADLs are giving loans, and that's mm. why they are putting high interest. So, 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 since um, these people cannot get uh, from the commercial banks mm -hmm. or for deposit money banks now, so shouldn't uh, that be like a red flag for these uh, ADLs not to even give them, since n knowing that they don't have um, character and integrity as it were? Okay, so, so let me so so. Your inability not to be able to pay off loans mm. or to pay off your current loans yes. with commercial banks or certain banks mm. as is, is a lot of business for some certain money lenders to this. So those ones, they focus on people who have bad credit. By default, that they would extend their bad credit worthiness yes. to, uh, <laughs> on credit worthiness yeah, as they, it were. They, they, they will extend it, but now, so that's why that's where, that's where the FCCPC also comes in. Mm. So a lot of approved digital lenders will give you loans and they know that you have bad credit. Mm. When you default, their mode of uh, you know, recovering the mm. loan is very, very unprofessional. True. Some will go as 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 high as you know tarnishing your image, mm. your phone contact, and all that. But a lot of Nigerians don't even when you apply for these loans, you just click accept, agree, accept, mm. agree, and those are, those, are, those those things you are agreeing to are, are agreement to say that if you default, we are going to assess all your contact and tarnish your image. People don't read all these terms and conditions when applying for these loans. Mm. That's why when it looks like they're trying to recover that, but again, that's not a professional way to recover loans. I think normally if you're owing any bank. Whether it's ADLs, the money microfinance, the normal way is they take you to court. They, they get a court judgment, mm. and there's a process called garnishy. They garnish your account. Mm. They put your account. They, I mean, there's BVN. They put your. They put your. They flag your BVN. Mm. Any money that goes into your account through your all the banks that you use, mm. they you know they take off whatever you're owing them, and everybody goes in peace. Yeah. Unlike the you know the very shabby way of going after you in places and tarnishing your mm. image on social media. That's that's a very shabby way of loan recovery. So. Again, there's no so taking a loan is not a bad thing. Our non our non performing rate right now is really is really high. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are a lot of non performing loans everywhere. No, commercial banks, microfinance bank, even all the big names, all the big fish. But I mean, it's it, it's a situation of the country that we find ourselves. A lot of our inflation rate is huge. Our interest rate mm -hmm. is high. A lot is going on right now economically. So again, so I think those are the apex bank needs to also you know do a lot to cushion this effect for nigerians mm. we want to everybody wants to establish a business and make profits true some businesses are currently at the, at the verge of you know winding up as we speak because of the high interest rates of servicing loans mm. 
those in the real estate sector also are also complaining they can't even pay back loans go to a lot of projects abandoned a lot of businesses abandoned some businesses are even thinking of leaving nigeria to other countries because mm. of the cost of servicing or you know, running a company in nigeria so mm. a lot again rises and falls on our government taking loans is, a, is, is not is not so a big deal mm. but the interest rate also i think needs to be reduced okay. if the commercial bank reduce the interest rate drastically then microfinance bank also will reduce theirs too because the commercial then the commercial banks and I think everything also falls on the CBN. If the yes. CBN now just two months ago, this, the interest rate was increased to twenty six percent, and you know, so we don't know what's going to come in the next coming months. It might also be increased again. So these things trickle down. So and I mean, again, it's the fault of the government, but we hope that something is done. Soon. Okay. So now for uh, businesses now who have challenges in performing uh, with their loans and all that now. What would you really advise them? They have taken these loans, and yeah. um, as it is right now, you know, just because of our policies and economic policies by the government, uh, you know, their businesses have been impacted, and uh, the their you know their working capital has reduced, and they are not really making so much out of their venture. So, how they what do they need to do right now? In as much as uh, they still have these loans to pay, and um, they don't really have the wherewithal. What would you advise them to do? So what I think, so what I think is doable is, I mean, for any business who has taken a loan and is struggling to pay back, I mean, it's simple. Sometimes there's what we call loan restructure. You can always okay. call your account officer. You can always, you know, strike out a deal wherever you can restructure your loan, mm. and you pay at a, of course, the uh, at a a more longer uh, tenor, sure. and of course with another interest rate mm. that will be easier for you to. So I mean. Because if you have a loan that is running and you don't keep up with that loan, mm. it's going to be difficult for you to assess other loans from other commercial banks mm. in the nearest future for other businesses. Yes. And as a businessman, that is not what you want to be going through. Mm. The our role model, the, the biggest businessman in Africa that we all look up to, Dangote, took mm. a loan from his brother to start the company. And look at what Dangote has grown to to be mm. today. So, so I mean, it's, it's about the paying back culture. I mean, mm. a lot of us take loans with the mindset of not paying back. These loans are not for are not national cakes, are not national they are, they are business money for businesses. So when you take loans, I have taken loans at some point in my life when I started my business, mm. but I took up the habit of paying back because I know that if you don't pay back, you might have a, a you might get an a, 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 you know invoice for a contract and you don't mm. have the fund. How do you you have to go to banks and banks mm. and asset, I mean help you get you know get this loan sorted mm. out and you're able to execute properly. So but if you don't so 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 some businesses actually don't have the capacity to pay back genuinely. Mm. Some have the capacity to pay back, but they don't just want they just don't want to pay just, back. Just for reasons best known to them. I think that's a that's a bad way to run a business because okay. what no matter no matter what happens, you pay back one way or the other. Because the person who has given you the money will come after mm. you. Okay, legally. so okay, no. So speaking of legal means and everything now, so for people now who genuinely uh, need credit, it may be for personal reasons or maybe for some challenges that they have. What would you really advise them? How do they go about differentiating between um, the um, authorized, uh, you know, money, uh, lenders. money lenders and, of course, uh, digital lenders that is, and of course, uh, there's loan sharks. So the honest truth is, all these things are information that are in the public domain. Okay. The approved digital lenders, as at as of May last year, was as we speak, is 284. Okay. The FCCPC back they said about 34, and unfortunately, some of those 34 people are still trading. So how do they even get access, to, as in, you know, permission still, to trade? So, the, so, so the, that's what I'm saying. That there's a lot of overhauling that needs to be done in that sector. Mm. The FCCPC needs to be pro more proactive. Once you have blacklisted someone, they do not have any legal right to still operate. Mm. Some even open loan hubs that they are not licensed, and mm. people patronize them. And they give Sometimes them, I hear they have your data that they even use for the illegal stuff. Yeah, so a lot is going on in that sector, particularly from all these. That's why they call them loan. Some are legal, some are not legal. So mm. that those that are not legal are called loan sharks. They, mm. You know, so they, they operate under their own conditions, and nobody's regulating them. So again, so this is very impossible for anybody not to, you know, because I mean we live in a country where nothing is certain. Your cost of living in a month is not certain. You mm. this month you can spend hundred thousand. Next month the cost of living is going to five hundred thousand. Nothing is certain. Mm. So every other time you need to assess these loans for you to you know keep up. But again, the habit of paying back is also very vital. People mm. must pay back for these co companies to remain in business. Okay. So, but for the loan, for the for the shabby ones who go after you, who post your pictures about the social media, I think that's very unprofessional, and the government mm. needs to clamp down on them. Okay, so uh, as we round off now, what would your last word on this be uh, for the government, uh, for uh, 
genuine uh, borrowers and of course uh, the microfinance industry and general businessmen who want to really get access to credit. So for the government, I think the government, particularly CBA, needs to do so much to reduce that interest rates. That interest rate is killing and it's taking a trickle, a, a ripple effect on every other sector of the country. Mm -hmm. For those who want to borrow genuinely, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a good cause. Everybody, every, every, there's, there's, no, there's no genuine business owner who has not borrowed money from any bank at mm -hmm. any point in time. And that's the way to even run a business. Mm -hmm. You don't go into a business with your personal funding. You will, if anything happens, you might, you might, you might, you might, you might go bankrupt. So mm -hmm. share the rates, let the bank, you know, bring half of the money. You put in some equity, mm -hmm. then, you know, everybody, everybody smiles to the bank at the, you know, once the project is executed. So that's the way to go. But again, the habit of paying back also should be also be invited. Mm. You should also pay back your loans. That's very critical. All right. Okay, we must say a very big thank you to you, Mustafa, for you all of the wonderful insight that you have brought home on this show. We just hope that the needful will be done from the part of government and, of course, those who borrow should always want to pay back and not just borrow and uh, just allow yourself to be chased about by yeah. this uh, uh, lenders. Thank you so much. Thank for you for having me. Thank you for having me. All right, that's the size of the show. We've been looking at access to credit uh, and um, how it has impacted on small businesses, the household, and um, of course, even the uh, lenders themselves. I, I was joined by uh, Mustafa Ewenla. He is um, a real estate surveyor and a public affairs analyst. So we'll be right back again some other time. Many thanks for being a part of the show. My name is Justin Akadonye.